Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Taya and this is Suwaru, my desert core island. Today we're going to be making a market, a bazaar if you will, in the desert and I want it to be the shopping district as well. I had you guys vote on what build you'd like to see next so we're doing that today. I have gone to some treasure islands and I have prepared the area. If you haven't seen this build being created, it's my house and I love it. We also have an entrance and we have a temple at the back. I highly recommend watching the VOD on that one. But for today, we're working on this bizarre shopping district. The airport is here and this is my entrance so far. I feel like with what I've done so far on the island, I need to adjust this entrance to kind of match more of the vibes that I've been building out throughout the island. I still love it though. From the airport, you head to the right and I've already started marking out with my lovely dots uh, where I want everything to go. So the green is the path that I kind of want to roughly build out here. And the orange is where I want buildings to be. So I kind of want the bazaar to snake around. Oh, oh, hey, Sahara, one second. Thank you, little Miss Anka. Did I just call her Sahara? Okay, anyways, how Virgo of you. This orange outlines will be where the buildings are. This one is going to be Avel's and this one is going to be Nook's Cranny. I'm just now realizing I didn't make it wide enough, but that's because I had to move Chatter's house from over here. And I do have to extend out this river a little bit and demolish this bridge, but so Sawara was looking really sandy. Now officially over half the island is covered in sand. So you can see where I used to have a bridge and then where Chatter's house used to be. And all of that area pretty much between where that little block of water and where Chatter's house used to be is going to be this market build, is going to be this bazaar. So it's a huge build. Let's get into it. I didn't commit to doing this whole sand transformation in one foul swoop. Like I'm doing it in tiny chunks uh, so that I don't get overwhelmed. And that's been helpful. I do want to have some water. I think in my like oasis neighborhood, which will probably be at the back right of the island, I will add in like a little river, like a little lake river that kind of like winds around. I think I also want to put clay into this bazaar because he feels like he would match the vibes. Having clay have like a little potion shop, I think I would put his house over here, like close-ish to the beach so that it would be like building, building, like feeling crowded. I also need to demolish this bridge because that's not where I want it to be. Let's see how we like it. So if you come up here, you'll see Abel's first, which I think is nice. And we can put like a bunch of rugs and things outside of there. Then we'll see Clay's house. And mm, why use the dots? I want his house to be further back because he doesn't have a lot of room outside the front of his house to really like sell his wares. You know what I'm saying? Okay, and I think I actually want to do another villager in this area. Is that crazy? Editing Taya here. I think you're getting the picture. I spent a lot of time planning, but let's just skip forward to when the buildings are in place. We have Abel sisters, and then we have Clay's house, uh, Nook's cranny, and a little tight squeeze, but I think that that will add to like the fact that this is an actual shopping district and it's like a crowded bazaar, I think that it's going to be good. I also put Flo's house over here, but I think I would like this to be Coco's house and she can have like the pottery. I'm going to move to a speed build from this point on and I will catch you guys at the end or if I run into something that I need to think through out loud. All right, this is my third stab at this voiceover. Let's try to do this again properly, professionally. Hello, everyone. So I'm gonna be using this custom sand path all throughout to add a layer of depth to the otherwise pretty boring in-game path sand. So I tend to do my path in this kind of awkward way. I select the middle tile from the nine tile path 
and I do kind of a rough outline and then I'll select like the corner pieces or the top or the bottom individually, do all of where I think the top pieces will go and then switch and do all of where like another piece will go. Along with this kind of S shaped uh, through line in this build, I also do add a lot of like tiles and rug custom designs. Everything that I am using, all the custom designs that I'm using will be of course linked in the description as always. I also have a Pinterest board for this island, which I think is neat to check out. And that's where I'm literally getting all the inspiration for this island is on Pinterest. And you can also see inspiration boards that I have for many other island types and islands that I've done in the past too that have more custom designs than I'm able to use on one island. So if you're looking for resources for island inspiration, definitely go check out my Pinterest that's linked below. But essentially here in the build, I am just building out this nine tile path in this S-shaped S -shaped form. Uh, and you get the picture. So let's just fast forward to real time Taya and get a final walkthrough of what the pathway looks like. So I've finished this pathing from the entrance. I believe this path has like a single vertical and horizontal pieces, which I probably will get so that I can continue this a little bit further. The path is finished now. So it kind of snakes down and leads you towards Clay's house and then past Able Sisters, past I don't like this straight line. I probably am going to adjust that a little bit. Let's just do that right now. That's much better. Oh, you little dink. I keep, <laughs> that's the problem. I like doing the path this way and kind of like putting it all together all at once, but I do miss pieces. It's okay. So it kind of snakes up past here through this little in-between spot and it kind of leads you back to resident services, but not quite and up past what will be Coco's house. So then you're probably just gonna have like a gate. Ooh, I or like a little plaza with like a fountain or something after the bazaar. I kind of cut uh, real time Taya off a little bit, but I just started getting really excited and then didn't really close out my thoughts there. I am definitely doing a little plaza at the end of this market to kind of close it off with a fountain and it ends up looking super good, I think. Uh, here is where I'm trying to experiment with adding in a different in-game path. It did not work, it didn't look good. I would have liked to have some intrigue on the map with like some alternate pathing tiles. I don't think in the end, I'm gonna actually end up having any alternate pathing types on this island it might happen but I don't I don't foresee that happening I think it's pretty much just gonna be sand and custom designs and speaking of custom designs I'm starting to add in a bunch of rugs right near Clay's house want them to feel very layered and detailed but in this first pass I just kind of lay down one with a little bit of an edge poking out from another rug underneath. I do come back here and add in a couple more rugs. Just kind of wanted to make sure that I had a variety of different rugs. Essentially, my custom designs for this island are tiles, rugs, and paths, like the sand path. That's like the essentials that I need for like this desert island. I do want to make a custom map because I feel like I can customize a lot of things like even banners for this market down the line if I get a map design going. Just as a little aside from the build, I'd just like to say thank you so much to everybody who watched my house decorating video and commented and liked. I really appreciate the support after coming back from posting videos after such a long time. It was really nice to see so many familiar faces in the comments. And I know this format of content is a lot more accessible for a lot of people. I also feel like I have more of a connection with you as an individual watching my channel sometimes when I'm posting a video because I see your comments and like right now I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to one person and I feel like sometimes with streams I get distracted or I don't finish my thoughts 
and I love the live interaction, but I also think it's cozy sometimes to just put on a video in the background and do your thing. So I'm just really thankful that I got the response that I did to that video and I'm glad to be back. So just wanted to say love you guys and just go little branches family. Amazing. In the same way that I laid down that path in a scattered way, I tried to just like put in a few items, see if I liked them. And then if I didn't, I would go back and like adjust that area until I liked the structure. So like the stall and like the table that I put out for each of these little shops. And if I wasn't happy with that, I would keep changing it until I was. I also broke up the path a little bit to put some weeds in between, which I think adds a lot more like texture to the sand. It's gonna be a lot of endless sand on this island. So in this area, I don't want the sand to be overpowering. I made a little fortune teller stall here, what will be eventually. And I think it will go really well with Clay's little potion shop, a little food stall over here and just kind of working with these festival items was really nice and gave it that vibrant feeling. When I was looking up images of bazaars to go off of, a lot of them had lighting stores. So I end up doing a lighting store uh, kind of over here, actually. This exact stall ends up being a lighting store, which is really cute. And then I do like a musical instruments one, a couple food ones, and I just think it's so special. When I showed it to Lycan, he was like, it looks like a Middle Eastern market. And I was like, yes. So yeah, I'm so excited to share it with you today. Also, as you always know, I went to a heckin' buttload of Treasure Islands to get all the items for this build. I also got back into using order bots for this build because there was a few items that I needed like a lot of and very specific. So a lot of the festival stuff and a lot of like the castle walls come in eventually, which is one of my favorite parts of this build. I end up surrounding this whole area with castle walls that makes it feel much more like you're in a city. And I'm getting the vibe that with an island that's mostly flat, any kind of verticality that you can add um, is good. So in the future, I think I will add a little second level when it comes to the neighborhood that oasis neighborhood i'm probably going to add in like a little second level moment but castle walls and like these festival balloons and trees were really important for this build to just like lift the whole thing and even just buildings on this island have been important like using buildings to create like depth and interest and like even additional lighting from the buildings themselves. Overall, desert has been easy. Like not as in not time consuming or not thoughtful, just like you put down sand, it do be a desert. Like it's just as simple as that. Flatten it down, add some cactuses, Boom, you got a desert. Bingo bango, desert. And guys, I've already been making a bunch of boards for what the next island should be, and I'm so excited. I don't know, okay, it's a toss up for me between a few different island ideas that I would really like to do. One that has been in the works for so long is a KK bubblegum inspired island. I think it would be so fun to just do pink and blue and kind of have that like pop star aesthetic city, but like also a little bit magical and fairy core feeling. Lots of KK references. Like I just think it would be so cute. So I have no idea if that's the next one that I'll do. Also complete side note, but related to new island ideas, I am so into astrology in the past year i have just discovered rediscovered rather my love for it and how it helps me understand myself and the people around me and like just grow as a person which is always great 
but Animal Crossing has a ton of astrology related items and I've always wanted to do like a space island but another thing that I really love is Sailor Moon. So is there a way that I can combine astrology and Sailor Moon and all things spacey into an island? I think so. So those are kind of the two ideas that are speaking to me the most right now. I also have a little project coming up in the next uh, month, everyone. So I'm planning to do a little bit of a collab with my dear sister dearest, Jesse Mundy, longtime Goldie Branch and my in real life sister. Um, so we're going to be doing a project together and that is going to be totally separate from my island. So look forward to that. I'm really looking forward to that. At this point, I had enough of the structure down that I started getting really excited about where it was going and what it was going to become. And working with these castle walls and trying to configure them so they wrapped perfectly around what will be Coco's house was so fun and just planning out like I wanted to have them staggered like this so that the castle towers would create these like upward lines and it wouldn't be like just a straight line across that it would kind of like step up 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 I was just talking about this with my sister actually that when you do diagonal lines or if you break that like grid of horizontal and vertical in Animal Crossing, it always kind of like, even though it's subtle and you might not even realize that something is off by a single tile or it hasn't been perfectly aligned, I don't know, I feel like it draws your eye and it makes your build more compelling. So anytime you can like slightly off center, it just makes it look more natural and realistic, especially if we're talking about a desert bizarre that's kind of chaotic and vibrant. Back to real time, Taya, for just a second. Oh my gosh. This is everything to me. I don't even think I need a gate over here, but I kind of love it. I'm going to bring that castle uh, tower all the way down with the straight wall that has like another entrance to go out into the desert from this direction. <gasps> Oh my gosh, I love this so much. I love this so much. See, this this view right here, that is the vibe that I wanted. It's not as busy. We are absolutely going to have lag through this area because it needs to be that way in order to achieve the appearance that I want. And I'm so excited. And it's taken up like a good chunk of my island, which is cute. And there's Clay. Hello. again. I've never put a lighting store into a market before, but I think it's actually super cute because this is a desert build, because it's a desert island. I think it's neat because of the, because, 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 <laughs> because of it being in the desert and so many of the inspiration photos that I saw featuring like stores that have lights in them, especially well, I mean, we got those Moroccan lights that hang from the ceiling in your house, selling those exact type of lights. They were everywhere. And I absolutely love how this little plaza came together. I used this tile that I also used in the temple build as well as my house. I thought I could get away with a very tiny amount of pathing in this area, but it did not work. So I had to make this considerably larger. And then the fountain fit over it perfectly and it started to really feel like cozy in this back area with this fountain in place. And this won't be the last time you see me fuss with castle walls, but I tried to cut out a lot of my fussing or speed it up substantially 
It was just a little bit of a dance to get it the exact positioning that I like for it to all work out and to be able to put a tree beside that fountain, but also have a little bit of space beside the tree. It was a whole thing. And especially in this area, it's giving me Alexandria vibes. I feel like this island takes place at the same timeline as Alexandria and Papagayu. They're just like different parts of the same world. So I'm getting, I'm getting some good vibes with this island already. I mean, I say already, it feels like I've had this island for a long time and yet it feels like I just started because I haven't been working on it consistently in a really long time. Getting back into it, I'm like, desert is one of my favorite themes that I've ever done. And that's only three builds in, but I'm like, it's just so unique in the fact that some of these colorways and some of these items you wouldn't use on any other island. Like, I would never use these sandcastle colors. Like, I've never used that fountain colorway before. The baobab trees, I don't know if I would ever use them on another island. It's just so cool to be able to use palm trees everywhere again too, like Papagayu style. And it is one of those themes that has a lot of items that work well with it. Like there are a lot of exclusively desert items, like items that are really Egyptian or items that really feel like the Moroccan set, for example, which I haven't used yet. And I'm kind of saving it for like the interiors and having like these plush, really like deeply lit interiors. And I'm definitely gonna have to speed run HHP because I think I'm gonna be wrapping this island pretty quickly based on how much space each one of my builds is taking up. And then also I do wanna have a lot of open space that just feels like the wide open wild desert not as a cop-out but just as like literally there should be some open space that has very little going on so that it's you know believable as an actual desert i want there to be like a span of space in between each build and i probably will add pathing i think what i need another kind of path that i need on this island as far as custom designs is like a log path or like a like a rundown wooden walkway kind of thing because I would like to intersperse like a little bit of a walkway moment throughout the island too I think here's more shuffling basically I just move everything over one half of a space so let's just skip forward and the whole reason why I did that massive move is just so that I could plant another coconut tree which was something that just a couple seconds ago, I thought I had the spacing right on, but I had to adjust it again just because I needed, I needed that extra space, man. I needed to have two full spaces in between where the fountain was and the wall. Looking back on this, it is really funny the way that I built this out. Like from the start, I started by putting in the middle tile on the main through path. And I kind of followed a similar technique when it came to placing my items down. I think I'm realizing that this is something that I do pretty frequently is like putting down the basic structure of the thing and then just going all over the place, like not staying in one area and like chaotically running from one end of the build to the other to make, you know, slight adjustments or move items here and there. I'm sure I'm not the only person who does that, but me knowing that also kind of helps me to plan out my builds a little bit better because I know like making a build that's very large allows me to walk away from one part of it and work on another. And then when I feel inspired to work on the other part again, being able to go back to it and like take up the mantle of that one space. But I did work on this little potion shop for clay for quite a while. I really got absorbed into it. I think all of these like little coffee type of things like the siphon and the coffee grinder made it look like that was what he was using to like make his little potions. And I end up again putting in another castle tower so that I can like shift the spacing of these walls slightly out. Uh, and make it a bit less 
perfect. And I think adding that one tower in also right near where I'm gonna put in a gate on this end kind of helped it, kind of gave it some height and some lift in this area, which I think that, as I've said before, that's gonna be a major thing with this island in general is having some height from something, whether it's a building or a castle wall or even a tall plant like this cocoa, cocoa, cocao tree. Anywho, in that same vein, I do add a lot of greenery into this build, like shrubs and weeds and glowing moss. I am also putting clear paths all around whenever I'm putting down a weed so that they don't spread because this area could easily get out of control. But I am putting a lot more greenery than I am going to be putting in other areas on this island that I want to have more like deserty. Uh, there's the clear path. I did show it once, but I thought it was repetitive to keep it in every single time I'm putting a weed down. Anyways, in other areas, it's probably not going to be so green and lush feeling, but I thought because this is like the heart of the island, like this is their plaza for commerce that they would have like water and we have a fountain there. So it's a little bit more fertile, even though like there is this cracked earth and like everything is very sandy and arid feeling. We still have like these pops of color with the green. One thing I was considering is setting the dream address to like fall so that you don't have that bright green grass underneath and it would kind of be like a brownish color more. So I think that that might be good. I've also seen a few other islands where they did that and the weeds kind of suit better with the desert vibes. So I might time travel a little bit and see how that looks. The bamboo would also be a little bit different in color and some of the flower stems would be different as well. So I think it might work. And now I'm just adding in the final items here. We needed some more height in those areas. We need that those lush palm fronds to be there. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you liked this video and you want to see more from me. And that's the end of the build, everybody. So I hope you enjoy some final shots of the areas. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, everybody.